everyone, Alex at Cormdale Farm. We are a year two Oklahoma flower farm located in Northeast Oklahoma. We are in zone 7A, so we don't get too cold in the winter, but zones don't tell you heat, and we get really hot in the summer. We spend most of the summer in the 90s, often in the hundreds, so we have to pick our plants accordingly. I got up early, the sun is rising right now, to check on our fields to see what there is to harvest. I think I'm gonna spray for some bugs today. And I thought you'd bring along on a little tour of what we got going on for our summer flowers. We have three fields located in the front of our property. We sell retail bouquets from our flower stand that hangs out eh, over there at the tip of our driveway. And we have three fields. Here is field one. We've got field two. Well, I guess this should be one. The other one is two. <laughs> and this is three. We planted out this field first. Then we came over here to work on this field. And the third field we are slowly working on planting now and is serving as our succession planting for flowers we'll likely use at the end of July into August and September. Take us through fall give you a tour of what's going on here. We did a video early in April after we started to plant out this field and so it's fun to look back and see just how much growth has occurred since this just looked like a black tarmac with like little sprigs coming out. These first two rows are planted from plugs that I purchased not from seed. This one is snapdragons. It's a rocket mix and this one is lisianthus and you can tell they're plugs because they just have absolutely perfect uniformity all down the line. They haven't started to bloom yet. Rocket likes heat, but as you can see here, they've sent up their bloom stock. So I'm thinking this patch is probably a week away, probably in two weeks, lots and lots of color. Lisianthus, never grown them before. They like a cool start and a hot finish. So I think these guys will bloom sometime in July for us, but oh my gosh, are they like the slowest growers ever. They look healthy, they look beautiful, no bug damage, they keep growing. So we're doing the right thing with them, but also the glacial pace has me wondering if I'm gonna like them or not, because to sit here from March until July to wait to get to blooms is a long, a long time that's expensive real estate here they are i'm excited to try the flower buying those snapdragon plugs and lisianthus one because i wanted to experiment buying plugs see how that process is but also as a fail safe in case my seed starting in january and february was terrible because i love snapdragons i want to have snapdragons but they're kind of tricky the seeds are microscopic they take six to eight weeks to get ready so i was like i want to have this order placed in case like I super fail in getting them, but I didn't fail. So now I have two and a half rows of snapdragons. But here is my row of snapdragons and you can see kind of the difference when you start your own from seed and they're not like perfect, like a greenhouse plug tray. So the interesting thing is mine are about ready to bloom. They're a bit farther along, but they're also, some of them are a bit different varieties. Like there's some Potomac in here, not just Rocket. So they're different heights clearly like look at this one is like super tall and then like what are you doing in here friend like are you guys gonna get going or not but i'm excited that they're ahead and kind of it's almost like a staggered succession even though i didn't totally plan it that way look at these beauties they're gonna open any day now i can harvest them get them in the cooler and wait for bouquets. It's always interesting when you buy mixes because the colors all tend to bloom like together. Like if you notice, these are all pink. And if I come down here, they're all pink. And then like these guys will probably be like a yellow and all the yellows will go, to go together. But I have snapdragons, it wasn't a fail. I'm on a time crunch here to film as these wobblers turn on at seven o'clock. <laughs> so see if we can get it done before they turn on. This row is my Snapdragon, or uh, Snapdragon, my Sunflower row. I planted three successions 
first one went in, second one went in, third one went in. I have already harvested this section. I harvested over the last couple weeks. We completely sold out at our flower stand. People went crazy for the early sunflowers. So this is just kind of like scraps that are left. Guys that didn't make the cut and a lot of them are sending up like their side buds and stuff. And I'm just leaving them for now. I haven't cut them down yet and figure out what I want to go in this row. And then this last section here in the back is still working, working on themselves. Yeah, let's go over here. Next up is my gladiola row. I did two successions, but it's 30 feet long. So this first section I planted, I don't know, sometime in April, and they're gonna send up sometime in June. I can tell that they have all their leaves that they're going to get, and now I'm just waiting. They haven't swelled up yet, but I'm just waiting for the flower stock to come out. I love gladiolas. And then this is my second succession that should come like maybe a month later, three weeks later, if I did it correctly. But the funny thing is, my husband asked, said he was going to help me. And so you noticed I planted that section. Every single one is up. He planted this section. And I don't know what happened here. Nothing. Nothing's coming up. Our theory is he planted them like two miles deep and so they're just taking a really long time trying to get to the surface. I hope that's the case, but we have some gaps. Over here is my half row of snapdragons. These were all the extra ones that I had from when I sowed and needed to pop them in. And it's exciting because whatever I planted, I didn't label very well. My choices are Potomac, Early Sunrise, Potomac something and rocket mix. And these, oh, a Potomac orange. And I think that's what these might be. These guys are, let me go this way. These guys are opening up. I'm gonna harvest you this morning to put in the cooler. They look beautiful. I love how straight they are. The netting is doing its job. It's attached to T-posts here, the shorter T-posts, not the big bulky ones but they're growing straight as an arrow. The stems are insanely long, which is perfect for wrapped bouquets. And they're really sturdy, great cut, great flower for our wrapped bouquets. And then the rest of this row, this half row is status. I've never grown status before, but it's great for drawing. And I like experimenting with new flowers I haven't quite tried before. I was a little nervous. I think I planted them too close together. This is six inch spacing, but you live and you learn. They're doing great. Oof, look at all those flies. Get away. Gross. But this one's going to be, I think, a beautiful apricot color. And I will harvest like all the way down in the stem there, or uh, in the base of the plant. And this will be a perfect height for bouquets. These guys in here got a little stubby, but I'm just still letting them bloom so I can see what they look like and enjoy them and then I'll cut them and then maybe they'll reflush like a taller, a taller stem. Now for the zinnias. I have one, two, three rows of zinnias, all different colors. I have a Benares mix. I have an Oklahoma pink. I have white. I have queen lime. I have Benary salmon. I'm trying to think back. All the like lighter spring colors, not the super saturated fall thinking colors, but look at how nice they look. They were planted at different times, so they're like slightly succession planted in their heights, but they're all kind of catching up together. Yesterday I went through, I'm let this car go by. Yesterday I went through and I pinched off all the buds because it is sending up, like I had a hundred, flower buds, which would have been exciting to let them bloom, see the color, but not helpful for bouquets because it's not tall enough. Like if this guy, like look, here's a bud. Awesome, but he's connected 
right there. So that's like a six inch stem. That's not very helpful to me. So I want to keep pinching them so they keep putting energy into growing more foliage, growing taller so that those stems can be cuttable. But I did like I did let this little weenie, this is my Oklahoma pink section bloom just so I could see some color and know that they're coming and we'll have zinnias in no time. So these guys went in first and then a week or two later these guys went in so they're a little bit shorter. Now my last row in this first field is half gomfrina. There's a white and pink mix and then I have what's like an orangey color here in the front so that's why the foliage looks different and I've just been going through I hope you're enjoying all these fly bugs I'm disturbing as I walk through the gomfrina takes a long time to get going into big maturity so you can harvest stems but I can tell this guy's going to be pink because I can see but I pinch it off keep growing tall so I have stems I can use but they're happy only a couple gaps I think there were like three three that didn't make it which is not bad and then lastly are marigolds I have an orange and I have a really light yellow like a light butter yellow a blonde color almost and if it shows up in the camera I'm just covered in buds really really close to them all I mean look at that down there really close to them all exploding open. I know what color this one's going to be because there's a sneaky one down here. Too short though. Let me pinch that off. And it transitions here to the blonde. And look at that. Oh, it's so many buds. And this is what they look like. Open. I love the color. Love that blonde color. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping it's when, no, it's Tuesday when I'm filming this. I'm really hoping maybe they, most of them will open up so I can use them for our Saturday bouquets, but maybe I'll miss it by a couple days. Here, let me come to the corner. This is what we call our Northeast field. It's the first one planted. It'll be the first one we use for summer bouquets. Now let's go over to that far field and I'll show you what's going on over there. But first, here's our wildflower patch that the pollinators absolutely love. This is covered in butterflies and cover. We saw a hummingbird yesterday. The ruby-throated hummingbirds have arrived. They've migrated in, and they are really happy with all their choices. But let's head over to the northeast field. This field we are using for our sunflower successions. Every Monday as a discipline, I start two or three trays of pro-cut sunflowers, and then they're planted out about two and a half weeks from the day that I sow them. And if I do it every single Monday, I constantly have trays at various stages. And so about two days ago, I planted out some sunflowers and I'll show you what they look like. So I think, I wanna say maybe four days ago, these guys all got planted out. And then yesterday, because today's Tuesday, I started three trays inside. And then on that table in the far distance where I'm hardening off seedlings, there are two trays that are about uh, five days from being planted out. So I have seeds started, seeds ready to go in, and plugs that are going. Now this absolute monster wall <laughs> of sunflowers was planted out in succession after the sunflower row I, sh I showed you. So they're all in various stages, but they've all kind of caught up to e each other. And I'm kind of hoping, especially this section, all comes into bloom together so that our bouquets can just be like super sunflower heavy because that's what everyone wants. But this section, the first one to be planted in this row for succession, are already opening and I get to come in here and harvest them soon. So everything in this row, except for this one we'll talk about, is either white night or white light, which is a white sunflower with a different color face. This guy got mutated from a bug, but you can see this is white night. So I guess this section is white night. That just confirmed it to me. I left him to bloom because a bug got in and munched before I could get it. Same with you. You're looking brutal, bud. Whatever, look at it from far away. But like this guy is ready, this guy, 
we have heavy bug pressure here in Oklahoma. Sometimes it feels a little bit like Australia with the amount of bugs and issues we have, but we power on. So tons, tons, tons ready to harvest. And I need to get them before the bugs get them. But this next section, I'm gonna back up. The path is getting too narrow here. So this section, so you can see there's like chartreuse kind of color leaves, the ones I just showed you, and in the middle there are darker green. This section is sunflowers from Sunflower Steve, who is a sunflower uh, breeder in Wisconsin. And he's been working for decades on breeding double sunflowers. So I'll put a picture on the screen. They look absolutely beautiful. He did a limited seed sale back in, I wanna say February, and they sold out, I think he said in like 16 minutes, but I was able to get a packet. And that's what these are. So there's not too many. I wanna say there's only like 50 in the pack, but we'll do a video when they bloom and show everyone like what we got because it's a mix. So it's kind of a surprise. I don't even know if I'll use them in bouquets. I might even just steal them for myself because there's not that many and I wanna enjoy seeing them. But that's what these guys are. And then, like I said, this is probably white light and who knows what those jokers are, but we'll find out. And then what I'll keep doing is all those ones I started, I'll just keep chugging down the path. And then I have, a, I have one here to use, and then I have one on the other side of Sunflower Wall. I'll show you. Here we are, so then I have another path that will burn holes in to keep going for succession planting. Here is what's in the middle ground. So like I showed you the first row that's getting all the seedlings. These guys are about 10 days old from being planted out. So when these guys are completely spent and cut down, these guys will be going. Then when these guys are done, that other field. Now this field is interesting. This is a rainbow mix. I typically don't do mixes for sunflowers. I do specific ones. But we planted these guys out to actually, we planted them in nine inch fabric. So that's why they look a bit more like monster size. So I'm not planning on cutting these. I planted these to let them bloom out completely so that people driving by, which I think you heard as I've been recording, we have our flower stand and then we have our country road right here, which is frequented fairly often. And people love driving by and actually being able to see the farm. And so with a flower farm, if I'm doing my job, more often than not, you're not seeing a lot of the color. Like the snapdragons I showed you, I'm gonna go cut a bunch of those with like a twinge of color. So people aren't often going to see all these snapdragons in beautiful bloom or those sunflowers that I showed you that were just beginning to crack open. I need to grab them. And so often people drive by the flower farm and they're like, it's just green. Like, are you a green foliage flower farm? Like, what are you doing? And so because of that, we planted this like, we're calling it like, the show row or whatever. I'm gonna let it completely bloom out. So then when people are driving by, they're just like, oh my gosh, 30 feet of gorgeous sunflowers. Look at that. It gives some color that's not just green. And I can just let it be, the birds will love it. Bring them here, maybe they'll have like a little sunflower snack and then they'll actually eat the cucumber beetles and be helpful to me. TBD, we'll see if that works. But this is show row. And I think we're about a week away from it cracking into color. On the other side of our sunflower show row, I have 25 dahlias. They're all the same variety. It's a beautiful orange pumpkin-y color with purple, purple foliage, and they're doing amazing. I'm not convinced about dahlias in Oklahoma, but this is like my trial row to see how they do and if they're worth all the extra finagling effort to baby them along. And at the last row, we have our tomatoes growing up a cattle panel, and that's just for us but I wanted to get them out of the raised garden and into a more controlled trellising environment to grow as many tomatoes as I could fit. And I think we ended up maybe with like 23 down that row. So this is the Northeast field. Tomatoes, dahlias, show row, and then five rows of our sunflower successions. Let's head over to the far field and beat the wobblers. 
This last field, the southeast field, is operating basically as my succession planting so that everything I put in there are like bold late summer fall colors. That's when I'll be harvesting them and that's when I'm putting them in now and just kind of doing our fields kind of like in a block is what made sense to me this year. We'll see how I like this plan. Might make some adjustments for next year. But we started planting a couple days ago and I will say I'm fairly okay at starting seeds, pretty good at planting. Things generally go pretty well, but this field so far has been humbling because it's not going well and I'm losing a bunch of things. And so I'm gonna have to start over in some areas. It's not like the end of the world. I have enough, like at least 50% is surviving, but there's way more gaps than I want. And so I'm gonna have to come in here maybe this evening and do some direct sowing, start some more seeds inside to have plugs to pop in these holes because I don't want this many gaps, but ugh, so annoying. This first, this first row here is the last of my Snapdragon plugs, goes about two thirds of the way and it comes off of this Snapdragon row. So while they won't bloom at the same time, it's kind of like a continuous Snapdragon will come down and I can easily add netting. And then at the end, are two trays of sunnies that I have because they share six inch spacing. And so it was easy to just be like, yeah, I have a sunflower field, but easy spacing. I don't know how much the camera is gonna pick up on the death and carnage <laughs> that has occurred. And it's very depressing. This next row, I know you can't see much because they're so tiny, but this next row is all Cosmos, a couple different colors, but I'll bring you in closer. What if the wobblers turn on? like right when I'm doing this. That would be ridiculous. But these were Cosmo plugs and they looked so beautiful. They were like, let me show you a nice one. Let me show you a survivor. They looked so nice when they went in, like nice floofy foliage and stock. And then it's like dead, 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 going to die, dead, 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 dead frustrating. I'm hoping maybe they've started to settle in and we'll have a little bit less death from here on out. This is a different variety of cosmos where the leaves look different, but we've got death here, death here, death here. So bummer, but that's life with farming. You have to adjust. This next row is an entire row of marigolds. Marigolds are not as bug eaten here. The cucumber beetles tend to go for the zinnias, leave the marigolds alone. And so they always save my butt later in the summer when it's like Armageddon with bug pressure here and I'm just needing blooms that don't look tarnished, they don't look terrible. Marigolds always save the day and I think they're beautiful. I know that it's like a controversial love-hate with marigolds. I love them, I think my customers love them. So I want an entire row of save my butt marigolds in different colors and so that's what I did. Here we have an entire row of zinnias in those warm summer fall colors like I told you about. Not as much death as the cosmos and the marigolds but more than I want to have acceptable. So a year three goal for me is going to be plug like transplant consistency and not as much loss but I mean honestly if you can pick it up in the camera, like there's probably at least 250. <gasps> oh my gosh. Did you? <laughs> well, God, that's on camera. <laughs> I was like, I was like the Blair Witch Project for a second there with the camera shaking and the scream. Well, these are our wobblers. Perfect demonstration. We have drip irrigation under the fabric in the Northeast and uh, northwest fields, but we are trialing wobblers this year because they are so much easier to install and it's a much lower labor and it's also way less expensive. Each of these were like $25 total, which is way different than doing 30 foot rows of three to four lines in each. So we're trialing it. We'll see how it does. But up there at the tippy top, I have basil and I started another tray of basil. So I'm going to do one more tray of basil and then probably direct sow zinnias. Over here I have half a row of zinnias and then I'm gonna direct sow the end. So in the end I'm gonna have two and a half mega rows of zinnias in this field. 
And then these two haven't been planted because I can't quite decide what I want to do. I think I'm going to do Celosia and Gomfrina. And now I have another nine foot spacing that who knows, I might go wild and just plant more zinnias and just like drowned in zinnias. But I'm trying to figure it out. So that's our field tour. Like I said, when people drive by, they're just kind of like, that's a lot of I'm like a hollyhocks. They are probably 10 feet at this point, maybe nine feet. But like I said, people drive by and it's a lot of green. So we sold out all of our tulips. We had 3,000 tulips. We sold every single stem I could cut in March. Then we had just what's been like a painfully long gap to flowers because we're working on investing in peonies. So those aren't blooming yet, which would be an early May flower for us. And then April is typically ranunculus here. And I grew a small patch because I wanted to learn how to grow them before I invested in a lot because I wanted to mitigate just financial loss so that we can actually get to profitability for our flower farm and not continually be digging ourselves out of holes because I keep killing things as I'm learning. So we're trying to do things a little more chug slowly so we didn't have ranunculus but my trial patch went fantastic so next year we're going to have a lot more ranunculus which is exciting but now we're finally at the summer flowers and i feel like like we're right on the edge of tipping into everything in full bloom and just chugging through buckets and buckets, wagons and wagons of flowers until frost which is typically mid-october for us but we're like just not there yet like i showed you the marigold buds and the snapdragon buds and the zinnias are getting close and so i'm still a little bit scraping together bouquets for saturday a lot of sunflowers a lot of larkspur and bachelor buttons and stuff which grows in a different area i'll give you a little peek here but before long i'm thinking mid-june is kind of when we tip off that cliff into drowning in summer flowers i'm really excited about it let me give you a little peek of our raised garden where I get a lot of our spring flowers right now. It is absolutely heaven in here in our like kitchen garden, our English cottage garden. Since I got attacked by wobblers, which I knew were coming, but I didn't quite know what time it was. And the wobblers run for a really long time. They're not as efficient as drip irrigation, which gets like right to the roots, bubbles up slowly. We run it for about 15 minutes. The wobblers go a lot longer. And so I can't really be in the field doing stuff right now. I wanted to bug spray and do other sorts of things, but that's probably gonna need to wait. So I think I'm gonna find some tasks to do here in the garden that look absolutely beautiful. Harvest some peas, plant some beans, do some deadheading, weeding, that sort of fun tasks until all the kids wake up for breakfast. But I hope you enjoyed this tour and we are so excited and looking forward to a successful year in year two on our flower farm.